Hi year four, welcome back to another day of English. Um, today we are going to be looking at ice space sentences, which we will come to speak about in a second. But first thing I want to say is well done this week for your amazing work. We are really excited about what you're going to produce next week with the narrative writing. You have created some amazing sentences um, with your tension and suspense. You've created some imaginative plans and um, have gone to you know different places. And we are really excited to see what you come up with. Um, today we're going to be focusing on, a diff on some sentence types so that those plans can start to become really interesting when we start writing about them and you can start adding a little bit more description as well. Um, so let's see what we need to do today. The learning objective for today is to understand the use of ice space to create exciting sentences. So we're going to find out a little bit more about ice space, why we use them, what they're for. Okay, so what makes this a good sentence? Like fireflies in the night sky, the stars twinkled. Pause the video here and talk to someone around you about why that is a good sentence and what can you identify in it. Okay, so hopefully you found that there was a simile across at the front of the sentence here. So like fireflies in the night sky, the stars twinkled. So you've got something that is being described as like something. So they're not actually, there are not actually fireflies in the night sky, are there? There are stars, but we are likening them to fireflies. So having that at the beginning of a sentence, followed by the comma, adds a little bit more information to our sentence, and it is going to be classed as a fronted adverbial. So we're going to find out a little bit more about the rest of the ice space sentences and what they are for now. So, so I stands for an ing sentence. So the word that comes at the beginning of a sentence or at front of the verbial ends in the suffix ing. So pausing, he waited for the cattle to cross the road. So you've got what he is doing um, at that point. You've added it at the beginning of the sentence to give the sentence a little bit more description. Um, you're going to follow pausing or your ing word with a comma because it is our front of the verbial, remember. So S is for simile, like the one we had before, we had um, like fireflies in the night sky, the stars twinkled. So you're telling the reader how the stars are twinkling, you're giving them some imagery there, um, and it's just making that sentence a lot more exciting by putting that simile at the beginning. P is for preposition, so where something is situated, is it situated um, behind the hill, on the hill, underneath the hill, beside the hill? Um, giving you that information of where something is placed. A is for adverb. So for um, adverb, you, it is a word that describes a verb. We've been doing that a lot this year. Um, so words like cautiously, suddenly, anxiously, um, all of those words, words tell us something about the verb. So if you had cautiously, the boy walked around the lake, you're telling the reader how he walked around that lake. C is for conjunction. Conjunctions are connective words, so we normally get them in the middle of a sentence. However, we're putting them at the beginning of the sentence here. So, when or although, when he uh, crossed the road, he made sure to listen out for traffic, look and listen for traffic. So you've got, you know, a little bit more information there, putting that conjunction at the beginning um, to add a little bit more um, information. And E is for an ED word. So your ED word comes at the beginning. So something like um, astonished, she looked in the night sky and saw a UFO. So you've got your ED word there. It is again, it's our front of the verbial, as are all of the rest. So you've got your comma after that um, ED word. Um, and then you've got the rest of your sentence. It's just telling you more about what is happening and giving you that extra detail that makes it more exciting for people to read. Okay, so you know what the I space stands for now. I'll move it back in a second for you to complete this, but I would like you to pause this video and create your own I space sentence for this picture. So use one of the um, I space openers. So your ing, your um, simile, preposition, adverb, conjunction, or an ed word at the beginning of your sentence as your front adverbial, and create a sentence for this picture. If you want to create more than one, I am over the moon with that, but pause this now and just challenge yourself by really trying to make the I space sentence for this picture 
I'll move it onto this um, previous page. Oh, not that one. That previous page there, so that you've got all of the iSpace um, definitions there to help you. So hopefully you created your own amazing eye space sentences for this picture um, and you did challenge yourself. You might have found it a little bit tricky. Um, you might have you know, created quite a few, but I know that we can't wait to see what you came up with. Um, these are really going to help you. So try your best to really challenge yourself with these openers because your writing will become much more exciting as you use them. So I created an example for the eye space openers myself here for that previous picture to give you an example for each because you might have done an IMG, you might have done an ED, but you might be a little bit stuck on the conjunction um, opener because they are quite hard um, to put a conjunction at the beginning. And that's the one that I find most challenging. Um, or you might be a little bit stuck on the preposition. So I've got examples for each sentence type here. Um, and I'll go through them with you now. So I've got for ING, I, for the I for ING, I've got towering above the planet's surface, the jagged mountains stood tall. I don't have the comma after towering because I am describing the mountain here. And I'm, so I'm saying towering above the mountains, the planet's surface, sorry. Towering above the planet's surface, comma, the jagged mountains stood tall. Okay, you really need to think about where you're going to place that comma. Towering, um, yes, it is my ING um, opener, but I have got a bit more of that front of verbial there. S, uh, so for my simile, I've got like children dancing around a maypole, the stars circle the planets. Okay, I have forgotten my full stop there. Naughty Miss Ambler, um, hopefully you spotted that as well, um, and I'm not going to see any of those in your work. Um, so, like children dancing around main pole is my sentence, um, is my simile, sorry, so for my sentence opener, and then I, what I'm describing there is the star surfing the planets. For P for preposition, I've got across the perilous landscape, snow touched the mountain peaks. So, across is a preposition, it is telling you where something is situated, um, so I'm saying that across that landscape, that is where the snow is touching the mountain peaks. For adverb, I've got ominously, the planet dominated the sky. So I do have my comma after my adverb there. Um, so ominous means to some, that something is threatening, um, it's really uh, quite scary. So ominously, the planet dominated the sky. It's really big in that sky. Um, C for conjunction, we've got whenever the stars twinkled, the water reflection shimmered back. So you've got your conjunction there at the beginning um, and you're saying when, whenever the stars twinkle, so when it's happening. And E for ED, yeah, I've got frightened, followed by the comma, the little moon tried to overtake the giant planet. Okay, so for my ED word there, yes, the comma fit, goes straight after my word and my front of verbial and it fits there. But as you can see throughout, um, it depends how much information you add to your sentence as to where the comma comes. So for simile, um, for preposition and for conjunction, and most of the time for ing, you would have your comma after the first bit of detail, the first bit of description um, and what you're describing. So your task today, there is a sheet on the website that you can have a go at. Um, so just go for the LO again, it's to understand the use of iSpace to create exciting sentences. So for the entry level, you need to match the sentence to the correct letter. So really think about what each of those letters stands for and what each of these um, sentences has at the beginning and link them all together. Please use a ruler. Remember, we would not let you allow you to do wibbly wobbly lines at school. So try and use a ruler there. Um, challenge one, you need to find and highlight examples of eye space in the text. So they might not all be in there, there might not be a simile, there might not be a conjunction, but try and find the ones that you can find um, and highlight them for me. And then challenge two, you need to create a short paragraph about the picture and you need to use eye space where, where relevant and please write this neatly in your book. So this picture here, um, you are going to describe it, you're going to explain what's happened, um, you know, you might do it from the point of view of this alien, um, but use the eye space where relevant. I don't want to see boring openers when this whole lesson is about creating exciting openers using these eye space. 
You can go back in the video and pause it where the definitions are to really help you with this lesson. But hopefully by the end of the lesson, you will know each definition for each letter off by heart so that when you come to write your narrative in the coming week, um, you will be able to use them straight off the top of your head. Okay, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you get up to for iSpace. I'm looking forward to seeing those, um, those sentences that you had at the in the middle of the video. Um, and if you need any help at all, please email your teachers on the year four email account and we will get back to you and support you how we can.